So my first experience slacklining was actually on a high line and I was on a climbing trip with some friends and we took a day off of climbing and went and rigged a high line. I'd never really even known about the sport before that. And you know, just watching my friends that day, I was totally hooked on uh, figuring out how I needed to go about getting to where I could actually walk and cross lines and do tricks. I was super inspired by what I saw my friends doing and I knew I had to do it for myself at some point. Honestly, it was, it was just an obsession. There was nothing else that I thought about. There was nothing else that I wanted to be doing. When I couldn't climb anymore because my fingers were so beat, I'd go home and watch climbing videos. And yeah, I'd just put lotion on my hands and hope that they were good to go for the next day. And yeah, just always thinking ahead of like rad trips I could be doing, you know, lines that would be inspiring, that would challenge me, that were like off in way out of my pay grade, but still trying and going for it. Yeah, those were the things that, that inspired me for sure. My passion for downhill skateboarding started right away. It was like as soon as I stepped my foot on the board, I was like, this is something I want to learn. This is something that I want to progress at and I want to work on. And it has slowly but surely taken over my life. <laughs> and I'm glad, I'm happy it has. I have much more happiness and much more understanding of what I want out of this life. I'd say that mountain biking has given me self-confidence and makes me feel like I can be uh, in a space that I control and at the same time spiritually even, even connect with the scenery I'm in and it really just seems like it changes, changes my body chemistry. Highlining puts me in the environment of, you know, you're feeling exposed 360 degrees around you and um, but putting yourself in a really beautiful environment. So, you know, we're in the mountains or we're over a waterfall or something like that. And so you get to experience nature in a very different way than most people get to, to ever have the chance to experience. Conrad Anchor said it really well. It's like, why the hell do we climb these things? Why do we put ourselves in these situations? And he just like simply responds like, the view. And that's like corny for sure, but it's, it's pretty spectacular to have that perspective. You know, it's the reason why like, you hear people shouting through the canyons all the time. Like, where people are fired up not only because they just like, sent a hard pitch, but also because they like, got to the top and they look around and they're just like, woo! Like, this is glorious, like, it's great. It reminds you of the beautiful things in life, the things that you need to stop and take in. And so sometimes when I'm going down the hill and I just get this like, woof of beauty around me, it just makes me appreciate and be so thankful for life. When you're passionate about something, you're willing to adjust other areas of your life and make sacrifices in order to pursue what it is that lights you on fire the most. And highlining is something that puts me in such a state of flow and uh, moving meditation that I, I just seek it. I seek it everywhere that I can. The difference with downhill skateboarding compared to other passions that I have is that it's just me and the road and my board. Other passions, maybe passions I have for people, passions I have for things that are changing, downhill skateboarding isn't gonna change. I'm always gonna have a board. I'm always gonna have a road. I'm always gonna be able to find that meditation and that mindset. And that's something that only downhill skateboarding can give me. There's not really a lot of room for other stuff to like come into your mind, which I love. If you're not fully in the step that you're in, if you're, if you're thinking about other things, um, or if you're thinking about falling, like that's when you fall. And so fully being in the moment and learning how to breathe through distractions and breathe through some of the fear or shakiness or you know the line wobbling a little bit more than you're comfortable with. It's the idea of pushing yourself and pushing past fear and that in itself is a meditation and connecting with your inner self and figuring out like what you can do and what you're capable of. And then there's the meditation of just going down the hill and it's something maybe you're comfortable with the hill but instead what you're working on is your body and your form and how do you switch to get faster. And so that's also meditation and something that brings you into your body. You're like getting to know yourself and your body and what you're capable of. 
there's runs you can go down and just mentally not be sure you're going to get through it and then once you get through it it's just that whole exhilaration of just just like wow that that you know I wasn't sure I was going to get that or be able to do that and when you do it's it's like you've um, pushed yourself to another level As humans, we have kind of a natural fear of heights. Uh, we're not really supposed to be occupying the places that we walk. And walking those places um, does induce a feeling of fear. The fears of rock climbing or the danger of it is no, it never gets in the way of my passion at all. It's, those are kind of with climbing just so obviously inherent to the sport that it's just something that you know in the back of your head. You're kind of gonna, you're gonna feel fear and you're gonna realize what you're doing is dangerous at times, but yeah, it doesn't hinder the passion or the love for what I do and I think most climbers do. Healthy dose of fear, it's what keeps us safe. It's why we rig redundantly. Um, you know, we have multiple anchor points and we have two separate lines that we're walking with. So, um, you know, the fear in the situation definitely helps keep us alive and keep us safe and knowledgeable about what we're doing. People do ask you like what you know come on you're you're getting to that age you should be maybe you should be riding you know easier trails or you should um, be thinking about another sport or um, maybe it's time to slow down and, um, uh, and and it does it goes through my mind too but once I get back out there it, it just feels like it's it's the right place to be at the right time. Nothing that will hold me back from the end goal, which is just continuing progression and continuing to travel the world and explore and do my passion and my love. Make sure you know at the end of the day that, that you're climbing rocks. And if climbing rocks makes you happy, climb rocks, but just know that that's what you're doing. And, and you're there to do it for the fun and for the passion and for the love and this thing that makes you feel better than most things do in your life. So have fun, take a breath. You want to find what excites you in life, um, you know, whether that is painting watercolors or, you know, playing music or getting after it in the mountains. Um, whatever really makes you feel alive, it's important to find what that is for yourself. If you're searching for a passion, you just have to follow your heart. Stop thinking so hard. You know, just go out there, live your life and try new things. Don't just do what's normal and what's comfortable. Sometimes finding the things that are most exciting to you and will develop passion in you is saying yes to something that's not, not super comfortable or not super easy. You need to follow what's drawing you in, I think is the biggest thing, you know. Don't push something away just because you're like, oh, it'll never work or I'll never be able to do it. Or you know, Don't let those things get in your mind. You say, I want to do this. It doesn't matter what it takes to get it done. I'm going to do it.
I live life in a pursuit of my passion, a passion that is true to who I am. What I love to do is what I should do. Finding what I love to do took experimentation and an open mind. It didn't come in terms of material things or money. If you're living your life to have more money and things, the more you'll think of that as a metric and there'll always be someone who has more. Once you find a passion, you have it. It's yours and no one can take it from you. You become awake and energetic. Most of all, you find your purpose. It might take five, 10 or 20 years to find. You might already have your passion, but whatever you do, don't give up on finding it. We don't get happiness by living longer. We get happiness by living well and fully. You can fail at what you don't want. So you might as well take a chance at what you love.